I don't usually cover Donald Trump's rallies because I don't like to subject myself to torture if I don't have to, but I am willing to put up with, you know, some things that are more unhinged than usual. And usually at these rallies, he kind of just drones on incoherently for an hour or so. Um, and there's usually not much substance there, but here, you know, it was his first rally in months, and you can tell he had a lot of pent-up energy, because even though I don't think he actually enjoys being president, I think he does like doing these rallies, right? He likes the adoration, he likes people, you know, cheering for him, he likes that, he's a narcissist. But at this rally, there is so much that transpired, I have to talk about it, and some of the things that was said at this rally was just beyond the pale, even for someone who knows that a lot of the Trump news stories are, you know, sensationalized, and the media covers things that are supposed to be controversial, when in actuality, there are other bigger controversies and scandals from Trump's administration that they should be focusing on, namely, you know, warmongering and whatnot. Uh, that being said, I want to talk about the Tulsa rally, because even before it took place, there were really weird things happening. First of all, Donald Trump literally threatened protesters with violence. He tweeted out on Friday, any protesters, anarchists, agitators, looters, or lowlifes who are going to Oklahoma, please understand you will not be treated like you have been in New York, Seattle, or Minneapolis. It will be a much different scene. Now, I mean, we've seen the videos. Anyone who watches this show knows about the footage of the NYPD driving their cars into crowds of protesters. We've seen protesters in Seattle gassed with chemical weapons so they haven't been treated nicely so maybe the implication here if we're being charitable is that Trump wants to actually treat these protesters more nicely <laughs> <laughs> wrong well I mean of course not this is a direct threat of violence to protesters he lumps protesters in with agitators and anarchists you know usually he likes to make it seem as if all of the people out on the streets are the same but he's very uh, distinctly saying protesters too, right? So you see all the violence that's taking place in the streets currently, perpetuated by police officers predominantly? Well, it's going to be worse here. What you've been seeing in Minneapolis and Seattle and New York, well, that was a walk in the park compared to what we're going to do to you if you start any shit here. So, I mean, the implication is that they will be treated worse. Now, putting that aside, this was taking place at an indoor venue, probably, you know, featuring almost nobody wearing masks, thus spreading COVID. Although this guy was wearing a mask, I'm sure that he was made fun of because half of that crowd probably thought that it wasn't even a real thing. Like, I think they literally believe COVID-19 is either a hoax or, you know, the numbers are overblown, they're conspiratorial. So, I mean, you know that they're going to be spreading COVID-19 if they're indoor at this stadium, not wearing masks. And on top of that, we know that some of Trump's staffers who were going to be at this rally literally tested positive for COVID-19. So, I mean, it puts people who are going there at a higher risk. But regardless, you know, the rally took place anyway. And it attracted quite a broad range of psychopaths. You have a counterfeit version of the Brady Bunch showing up, singing about Donald Trump. They may be low-key satanic, I don't know. Uh, you have this particular individual cracking a whip outside of the venue, which, I mean, I'm sure was trying to communicate a very specific message. But, I mean, you also had people showing up with I Can't Breathe t-shirts as well. Now, maybe, you know, this is a right-winger who was wearing an I Can't Breathe shirt to signify that she doesn't like to wear masks because they're uncomfortable and they make it difficult to breathe. Uh, but, you know, it could be... Uh, a message in support of George Floyd, which Trump has tweeted previously that he supports George, George Floyd. He wants to honor George Floyd's legacy. Although, you know, whip guy, I didn't see the police arrest him, but the lady with an I can't breathe shirt was actually arrested. Even though she had a ticket and she attended this event, she was arrested. Take a look. The, the officer said just because you have a ticket. That's what we're trying to figure out right now, Alex. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. They're, they're arresting me. They're arresting me. And they're placed... It appears they're placing her under arrest right now, Alex. I've done nothing. I have tickets to this event. I get in there. I'm trying to listen to what she's saying. Bear with me. No, I'm not arrested. I'm not. So, whip guy, you're cool. You can come on in. Uh, lady with the I can't breathe t-shirt, you've got to get out. I mean, it kind of tells you about their priorities, right? Where they are allowing open racists to be associated with this event and people who are speaking out against police brutality and speaking out in favor of George Floyd, who Trump said he supports, are being escorted out. Now, Donald Trump isn't the one who ordered her to be, you know, uh, escorted out. But still, I mean, we know who this is trying to appeal to, right? We know exactly who Donald Trump is pandering to with this rally in Tulsa. Now, the lead up 
to this event may have been almost as bizarre as the event itself because Donald Trump boasted online that nearly a million people requested tickets but in actuality the stadium <laughs> it was pretty empty now you know theoretically you'd think this is a good thing because that allows ample room for social distancing but of course that didn't take place but come to find out it was zoomers on tiktok and k-pop stands who actually trolled donald trump by ordering a ton of tickets kind of inflating the interest for this event and some of them online were talking about they ordered, you know, 20. Others say, I got 11. So this led to Donald Trump being embarrassed, thinking that he was going to have this huge, large crowd when in actuality, this wasn't a full stadium. Well played, Zoomers. Well played, uh, you know, K-pop stands. I am so proud of Zoomers. They are so much more cooler than millennials. And I love you all so much. You really are the future. And I'm, I'm so happy about that. So... I think that if you're going to troll someone, there's not a more wholesome and better way to do it than what they did. So that was fantastic. And Donald Trump was trying to explain away, you know, why the crowds were lower than he anticipated. But moving on, I want to talk about the actual substance. And I use the word substance loosely of this event because there were moments where Donald Trump just kind of rambled incoherently for minutes at a time. There were other moments where I can't help but feel disturbed. But we're going to start out with the more lighthearted moments where he tried to redeem himself after he sipped water like a weirdo. Um, so he took a sip of a glass of water and the crowd loved it. Good job, Mr. President. That was that was incredible. Um, I wish Bernie could do that. <laughs> like the fact that they were cheering him on as he drank water, it, it's just it's just weird. Like, what world are we living in? We are literally living in idiocracy. Um, and I hate to be that guy, but he still didn't really drink water like a normal normal person. He was licking his lips like a weirdo when you only drank water. Like, what was this? Now, aside from that moment, there were portions of it that I could pick out and really nitpick and make fun of him for because, like, he doesn't make sense, right? Like, he, like Joe Biden, is, I think, experiencing very rapid cognitive decline. I don't know who is declining faster, but, I mean, there were moments where he, he wasn't saying anything and he gets sidetracked so easily where he'll be trying to make one point and then he'll branch off into a different point and then from that point he'll branch off into a different point when, you know, five minutes later he doesn't know about the original point that he was trying to make. Like, it, it's it's easy for him to go off on tangents, but there were moments where he contradicted himself in a very embarrassing, albeit still chilling way. So he called out so-called cancel culture and you know he was angry because not even the confederate statues are safe nowadays because of the pc police take a look at what he said specifically and listen to the words that he uses the unhinged left-wing mob is trying to vandalize our history desecrate our monuments our beautiful monuments tear down our statues and punish cancel and persecute anyone who does not conform to their demands for absolute and total control. We're not conforming. That's why we're here, actually. So he very directly and explicitly calls out the people who want to, quote, punish, cancel, and persecute uh, anyone who does not conform. So he says that, but he also says this at that same event. And you know, we ought to do something, Mr. Senators. We have two great senators. We ought to come up with legislation that if you burn the American flag, you go to jail for one year. One year. Jim and James. Jim and James. We ought to do it. You know, they talk about freedom of speech, and I'm a big believer in freedom of speech, but that's desecration. That's a terrible thing they do. 
We used to have things. We don't have them anymore because we want to be so open, so everything. And look what happens. We should have legislation that if somebody wants to burn the American flag and stomp on it, but just burn it, they go to jail for one year, okay? So on one hand, he doesn't like that the left wants to punish, cancel, and persecute anyone who does not conform. But at the same time, if you burn a piece of cloth, he wants you to go to jail for a year because you burned a piece of material. And the crowd ate it up. They loved it. Now, obviously, this is unconstitutional. Burning the flag, flag desecration is freedom of speech. Now, I love how he throws in, you know, the little caveat. I'm in support of freedom of speech, but I mean, that's desecration. So that's different, right? Desecration is a part of free speech because where does it end, right? I'm not one to necessarily make the slippery slope argument, but if we start allowing, you know, the prosecution of people who burn cloth, which is permissible under the Constitution, then are we not allowed to, I don't know, burn the Bible, desecrate religious figures? Like, if you are going to be an authoritarian, then at least try to be consistent, right? Because the crowd cheered him on as he denounced so-called left-wing authoritarians who want to punish people and, you know, taking down Confederate statues. That's not even cancel culture. We should want to cancel members of the Confederacy, right? That shouldn't be controversial. Cancel culture is good in that regard. But anyways, they... They loved when he said cancel culture is bad, but when it comes to their version of cancel culture, canceling people who choose to burn cloth or desecrate cloth, well, that's good. So basically, to them, authoritarianism is good only if they're the ones that are being authoritarian. I mean, there's no consistency here ideologically. This is a cult, and anything that their dear leader says, they're going to follow because, I mean, that's what cults do. Now, he also went on to make a point about his supporters. Uh, you know, he says that the, or implies that the left, they're the ones who are usually violent. Although, if, you know, for some reason, things got a little worse in this country and it devolved into, I don't know, maybe a civil war or, you know, left versus right violence, he knows which side he'd want to be on. The left is trying to do everything they can to stop us. Every hour of every day, including even violence and mayhem they'll do anything they can to stop us look what happened tonight look at what happened tonight law enforcement said sir they can't have they can't be outside it's too dangerous we had a bunch of maniacs come and sort of attack our city the mayor and the governor did a great job but they were very violent people and our people are not nearly as violent, but if they ever were, it would be a terrible, terrible day for the other side. Because I know our people. I know our people. We do too. They are violent fascists who simultaneously believe that the left are a bunch of hypersensitive snowflakes, but at the same time, violent thugs who we should all be afraid of. So, I mean, this is... It goes beyond him just being divisive. He's literally trying to pit Americans against each other, right? And usually, if you're a president, you have a vested interest in making sure that the country is united. Because if you try to pit Americans against each other, that leads to societal unrest and chaos. And that makes you look bad and incompetent as a leader. But I mean, he doesn't know what he's doing. He doesn't actually think these things through. He doesn't think about the consequences of trying to escalate tensions between the left and the right. He wants to make it very clear to his base of followers that it is the leftists who are the enemies. They are your enemy. They are not like you. And anything that they say or do is bad by definition because they are your enemy. He has dehumanized people who protest and he is tacitly endorsing violence here by suggesting that his supporters would actually be better at conducting violence in the event it came to that. So this was definitely an unhinged event, but um, you know the moments where he talked about cracking down on the First Amendment and you know ramping up the violent rhetoric—that is something that we can't just look away from. We can't just 
chalk it up to more Donald Trump derangement syndrome or, you know, anti-Trump outrage. This is serious. This is serious. He's getting desperate, right? It's an election year and he's pulling out all the stops and he doesn't care if he burns the country to the ground. He just wants to get reelected. So if he thinks, you know, he can ramp up the divide in this country, the polarization, then if that serves his political cause, that's what he's going to do. We can't allow this to continue. We can't allow him to threaten to use violence against protesters. We can't allow him to demonize the left and call for their constitutional right to desecrate a flag to be violated. He wants to jail them for a year. I mean, this is fascism. And sure, he may not be the next Hitler, right? That's not what I'm trying to imply here, but it doesn't matter. A fascist is a fascist, and that is what he is doing. He's using the tactics of fascist, and what he's doing is unacceptable, and we have to call it out.